everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, we're going to look at not one, but two of Hasbro's new Marvel Infinite Series 4 inch figures with the new Marvel's Vulture and Dr. Octopus. Now, I'm looking at both of these figures at the same time because A, I'm probably going to pretty much say the same thing about both of these figures, so I might as well get it over with in one review. And B, I wanted to be able to round out my Sinister Six team, so I thought it would be cool to just review these two together. So these figures come packaged in the same style packaging we've seen with all the Marvel Infinite Series figures. You've got the logo up top, the figures are clearly displayed on the card back, and then you have the names of the characters down below. On the back, we have a look at the figures with a brief bio and then looks at the figures, uh, other figures in the wave. Though the Vulture, and this isn't the first time I've seen this figure on the back for this wave, but they've got that Colossus Juggernaut figure, and I don't think that's coming out until the next wave, so I don't know why they're showing it on, on the card back for this wave, but the other two are out. Okay, so let's get these open and take a look at what's okay, inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging. Now I would say right off, the best thing about these two figures is that they'll round out your uh, Sinister Six team if you've been collecting this line for a while. Um, these are the last two members of the original Sinister Six that we needed in figure form for four inch figures. So we previously had uh, Mysterio released in the Marvel Universe line. And we have Kraven the Hunter. He was again released in the Marvel Universe and Electro and then last wave of Infinite Series we got a uh, Sandman and so you know like I said this allows you to round out the, the, the six original members of the Sinister Six now of course because these figures are part of the new Infinite Series like we've seen with the other figures this year the sculpts do lack articulation unfortunately and we'll go over de each figure's articulation in just a moment. Sculpting wise, I think both figures actually look really good. I think they did a good job with the with the sculpting on both of these figures. We'll start off taking a look at the Doc Ock figure, and I think the sculpting on this figure is really good. As I said before, I like how like you know things like the creases on his shirt look nice, and just you know the overall configuration of the figure. He's kind of he's kind of a heavy set character and they've I think they've captured that well. Um, he's actually taller than like previous Doc Ock figures like Toy Biz did a Doc Ock figure in this scale and uh, years ago and, and this Doc Ock is definitely a little bit taller. So I think this one actually looks better than the old Toy Biz one. I like the face sculpt for the most part. The, probably the thing I like the least is the glasses, they, the style of glasses they chose for him. And I'm not saying it's not accurate, I just don't really like it. I, I do kind of like the the glasses that they had for uh, the, the Toy Biz one better. But other than that, I think you know it's good. I like the flat top they've given him, and you know the face seems to capture Doc pretty well. Now they did give him work boots, which I don't recall him having work boots, and they're kind of yellow. Um, which I, I know he wears his worn yellow boots, but I'm more accustomed to boots like these. He's worn, I'm not saying he's not worn work boots, he probably has. Doc's had a lot of different looks over the years, so I'm not saying that he didn't. I just, for me, when I think Doc, I think of boots more like, you know, kind of superhero type boots than, than work boots. But I do like the detailing on the work boots, even the bottom on the treads and everything. I think that looks really good. Now the tentacles, I like how they've done the tentacles on this figure. There's basically four holes on, on the back that you just plug the tentacles in. Now, it's hard to say for sure, but it looks like the holes are a little bit different sizes. And I've noticed that some tentacles seem to fit better in certain holes than others. I, I, I'm not saying you can't you know, get, get them in multiple holes, but sometimes you'll put one in and it like fits really loosely, but then I'll switch it up with another hole and it seems to fit tighter. So the best thing to do is to, you know, just test them until you, you know, it fits in tightly and, and that should work. Again, you know, I'm not really sure if they're meant to be specific holes for specific tentacles, but some tentacles seem to fit better in certain holes than others. But once you get, get it right, you know, they fit in tightly. They, I haven't had any issues with the tentacles falling out, which is nice. 
And then another thing I like is the tentacles are just plastic pieces. You know, they have a little bit of give, but they're not like bendy or anything. But they did give them a swivel joint for each tentacle in the middle. So they do allow you to pose the tentacles with those swivel joints, which I think is nice. And you can turn them, you know, in the holes as well a little bit for more, more posability. They are too short, unfortunately, to like, you know, have him walking on the tentacles. But, but still, for the most part, I like how they've done the tentacles and how they attach on his back with this figure. I want to point out that on the yellow parts, especially like on his uh, the upper part of his hands, the, the wrist part of his hands, I do have some bleeding of the green through the yellow. Again, this seems to be a common problem with Hasbro figures with when it comes to yellow colors uh, with the bleeding coming through. But it's not terrible, but it, you know, if you really are looking at it, you do notice it. Even on the belt a little bit, you can see it kind of bleeding through. Articulation, as I said, the figure does lack compared to previous Marvel Universe figures. However, it's not as bad to me on this figure since Doc isn't known for being a terribly agile guy. Really the only joint that I, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get on this one is a swivel joint at the waist. But otherwise, you know, it doesn't bother me too much. So the head is on a ball joint, so he can look left and right. He's got a little bit of up and down movement, but not a whole lot. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joints at the shoulder. So he's got, he can get his arm out good, and he's got good rotation. He's got the bicep swivel. He's got the single hinged elbow. No swivel at the elbow, but he can bend his elbow about that much. And then he's got swivels at the wrists, and he does have hinges on his wrist. So he's got some up and down movement there. Now, as I said, no midsection joint, no waist swivel, and that's the most disappointing part of the figure to me is no waist swivel. He can do the uh, splits about that much. Legs are attached to, with ball joints. He can get his leg forward that much, and he can do his leg out and back. He's got a double-jointed knee, no bicep swivel, though, and then he's got hinges on the, on the ankles, and he's got a little, he's got swivel on the ankles, but the way the pants are sculpted, they come down over the boots over his ankle. So that does limit the movement. Um, he can do his foot down a little bit, can't really do his foot up. And then he can kind of swivel his, his feet, but again, are limited by those pants legs. And then he's got two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. The figure stands at about four and a quarter inches tall. Now, again, Doc is one of those characters that kind of vary in shape and size over the years. So, you know, I've seen him shorter, I've seen him fatter, but I, I think the scale works pretty good. He's about the same height as the other Sinister Six members. So, you know, that doesn't bother me too much. Some might say he should probably be a little bit shorter, but I like him being a little bit, you know, normal size as opposed to being a really short guy. And here he is next to, he is a bit taller than my Spider-Man, but I blame that more on the Spider-Man being on the short side than Doc being on the tall side. This is the first Marvel Universe uh, Spider-Man figure that Hasbro did. And moving on to the Vulture, again, I think the sculpt on this figure is, is, is good. I like the sculpting. I like the face sculpt. I think they've captured the likeness for the Vulture, Old Man Vulture, really good. Even get a little wash work on this white around his collar, some, you know, brown. So I think the figure looks good for the most part. Now, the wings themselves, they're just thin little pieces of plastic. So they look a little, I mean, they don't look terrible, but they look like thin little pieces of plastic as opposed to wings. So that's probably the weakest thing as far as the look of the figure is how the wings look. But still, over Overall, I like the sculpting. You even get some wash work on his uh, chest area with his abs and stuff. So I think this figure, again, is really nice looking and they've done a good job with that. Unfortunately, the my big problem with this figure is two things. One, again, the lack of articulation and then Two, the wings themselves, they're a pain in the butt. So again, they're just thin little pieces of plastic and they have one little clip and he has these little holes on his arms and you just clip the wings in. However, they don't stay in very well. You have to really kind of push to get them in at all and they don't stay in very well. And really, because the way the wings are sculpted, look kind of, unless you have them and see the wings just fell off as I move the arms, which happens all the time. But when you have like his arms down with the wings, I think it looks kind of funny 
you know, when you have his arms up and the, the back part of the wings are behind his back, you know, when he's kind of like in a flight pose, it looks okay. But when you have him standing like this, the way the wings come up over his head like that, I, I think kind of look funny. So you have to kind of try and angle it. So these upper part of the wings are like behind the figure. And really the only pose to do that in is having his arms up in the air, like he's in a flight pose. Now the problem with flight poses is because he's lacking articulation, you know, he can't do his head up at all or anything like that. So you can't even really get him in good flight poses because of the lack of articulation. So again, the wings, they're a pain in the butt because they are just, you can't really move the arms at all without the wings falling out because they just don't fit very well into those grooves. And then articulation, which I'll go over real quick here since we're talking about articulation. So heads on a ball joint. Um, actually, he can look a little bit left and right, but that collar piece, which apparently is removable if you pop the head off, um, kind of hinders the head movement, even turning left and right. He can get his arm out all the way. He's got standard ball hinge joints. He does not have bicep swivels. He's got a single hinged elbow. He's got swivel at the elbow. I think, did I mention on Doc, he's also got swivel? No, actually he does not have swivel at the elbow. He's just got the bicep swivel. So Vulture's got the swivel at the elbow, but no bicep swivel. And then no wrist articulation, so you can't turn his wrists. No midsection joints at all, no waist swivel at all. Legs are attached with ball joints, so he can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg forward about that much and can't really do his leg back at all because of the butt. No thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and then he does have actually ankle pivot on this one. Though to be honest, this character really doesn't have a big need for ankle pivots. And then peg holes on the bottom of his feet. This figure stands at about four and a quarter inches tall as well. So that's my review. As I said at the beginning, the best thing about these two figures is it allows you to round out your Sinister Six team if you've been collecting the other members from the line. The Doc Ock figure is actually not too bad. It is, it is Both have really nice sculpts on the figures and the paint applications are pretty decent, especially the Vultures. The Vulture has a really nice sculpt and, and, and really nice paint details for a figure of this size. The wings a little iffy because they just look like thin pieces of plastic and they are definitely a pain in the butt because they fall off if you try and move the arms at all and really they're only look decent in one pose with his arms up over his head but articulation definitely hurts both figures it hurts the vulture more than Doc Ock in this case but you know they both basically suffer suffer from a lack of articulation vulture really needed some kind of hinge joint on the neck so you could get his head up a bit for flight poses um, again a waist swivel on both figures would have been nice and even some wrist articulation on vulture would would have been nice as well so you know, again, if you're wanting to fill out your Sinister 16, then I would definitely recommend these figures. If you had to choose between one or the other, I would say go with Doc. He's the nicer of the two figures. And again, these are really nice sculpts, so if you're just going to set them on your shelf, then, then they're probably not too bad. But if you want to try and get them in a lot of cool poses and stuff, Doc you can probably work with more but than Vulture, but both, again, kind of suffer. So... You know, if Doc had more articulation, I would say this is almost a perfect figure. And the vo I guess the same for the Vulture. Well, the wings are a pain. Even if he had more articulation, they need to work on the groove system or something for how those wings are attached because it's really a pain for them and how they fall out so easily. So that's my review. You know, we'll have a full gallery for both of these figures over at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the description below. And as always, you know, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.